Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana, and with me today I have Stefan from Project Life Mastery. Welcome. Here we are at the beginning of 2022, and we want to talk about the mindset of success. If you are ready to claim this year and make it one of your best years yet, then you have to watch this video because it is all about your mindset. It's about your perception of the world and yourself. They say that success is 80% mindset and 20% strategy. Why? Well, that's how important your mindset is because whether you think you can do something or you think you can't, you're right. Because if you don't truly believe you can do something or achieve something, a goal or X, Y, Z, guess what? You're not going to put in the effort required in order to achieve it. And so it, your mindset is going to affect your results. Your mindset is going to affect your success. So Stefan, uh, Stefan is what I like to call the king of mindset. I know this is embarrassing, <laughs> but he really is like off and on camera. I mean, his YouTube channel, he's got lots of videos on mindset and just personally, you know, him being my husband, I know him a little better and he's just always working on, okay, being aware of his mindset, being aware of his limiting beliefs, being aware of how he could improve himself and he's so willing to do it. So, um, he has a lot of, a lot of great, um, content on mindset just through his own experience. So Stefan, what can you share with our viewers today on how to adopt the mindset of success? Yeah, well, I, thanks for having me on, Tatiana James. And one thing I'll mention is, for me, the reason why I had to really focus on my mindset so much is because I had such a disempowering mindset. You know, when I was growing up, I had a lot of scarcity and fears and doubts and insecurities and lack of confidence. I was lazy, I procrastinated all the time, I never followed through on what I said I was gonna do, I was never consistent. All of these things that I eventually realized contributed to a disempowering mindset. And your mindset is really just a sum of your beliefs. And your beliefs are what will determine your actions and the behavior and the decision, decisions that you make. And so, as you said, whether you take action, and that's gonna be based on the belief, an underlying belief that I can do this. Having the confidence in yourself, the confidence in the opportunity in front of you. If you don't have that belief, you think that it's not possible. If you believe that I can't do this, or I'm not good enough to do this, or I don't deserve this, obviously you're not gonna take any action. The behavior's not gonna follow that. So mindset is so key and is the number one reason why most people don't succeed. There can be an amazing opportunity right in front of you. It could be to build an Amazon business, a Shopify business, it could be an investing opportunity, but most people won't take advantage of it because they have a mindset that's holding them back or sometimes they have a desire for something. Maybe you wanna make money, you wanna prosper, you wanna succeed, you wanna become financially free, but you have an inner conflict. You have another belief that says, if I make a lot of money, then people are gonna judge me or I'll feel separate from other people and they're not gonna you know, love me. They're gonna feel jealous or envious of me or I wanna make success and, and, and to change my life, but I don't wanna do the work. You know, I don't wanna work hard, I don't wanna learn, I don't wanna change myself, I don't wanna to have to improve myself. That's an inner conflict. And so oftentimes people will sabotage themselves because of their mindset. They'll take two steps forward, two steps back and they never really end up getting anywhere. And so there's no shortage of, of opportunity to make money, to build a business, to achieve whatever goals that you want in your life, but it's gonna come down to having awareness of your mindset, having awareness of your limiting beliefs, which we all have, having awareness of some behaviors and patterns that we have that are not serving us, and then also taking on and adopting mindsets of success, beliefs of success, and I think the biggest and the most important way of doing this is through a process called modeling. Modeling says that if someone else is successful, it's not by accident, it's not by chance, it's not by luck. There are specific things that that person's doing that's contributing to their success. And you can model that, you can observe, you can analyze, you can evaluate that, you can extract from that person not just their strategy, not just what they did and the steps that they took, but also their beliefs their mindset, their habits that they have, the consistent way that they look at things and, and, and the, the, the viewpoints that they have, the perceptions that they have. I think one of the best ways to do that is obviously one of the ways that you're doing it right now. You're watching a video, you're watching Tatiana, and as Tatiana speaks and shares content on YouTube, she's revealing to you all of her beliefs, 
and you can adopt those same beliefs. And another great way of doing that is reading books, reading books of other successful entrepreneurs or successful investors or successful people that have transformed their body or whatever it is that you want to pursue. When you study those people and you learn from them, you're basically downloading and uploading to your brain their beliefs and taking on those beliefs as if they're your own beliefs. And by doing that, you'll find automatically your actions, your behavior, and how you show up will change. So I think that's one of the best ways is just find other people, study mindset. There's actually a book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. One of the most common uh, things that she talks about is there's a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. A fixed mindset, we all know people like that in our lives. They don't want to change. They're very uh, rigid and inflexible in their beliefs, their viewpoint. They don't want to look at other perspectives. They're just so attached to looking at things in a certain way. Oftentimes with those people, you might share an opportunity. You might share personal development. You might share, hey, you can do this, you can do that, but they're not willing to step outside their comfort zone and their current reality to explore other possibilities. Mm -hmm. Someone that has a growth mindset is always looking at different possibilities, mm -hmm. that everything can be improved. I can improve, you can improve, we can all improve. That requires humbling yourself, humility, which oftentimes people with a fixed mindset, they're more in their ego, right? Because they don't want to damage their ego in any way by admitting that there's something insufficient that they can improve or change. Someone that has a growth mindset understands I'm still a student, I'm still learning, I've never really made it, um, I'm always gonna learn, I'm always gonna improve, and even if I make mistakes, even if I fail, then I'm gonna learn from that, I'm gonna grow from that as well, and that will eventually contribute to my success. So there's a lot we can talk about, there's mm -hmm. so many it's different belief systems that you can break down that are really important that contribute to someone's success. Well, how about I share with you some of the most common limiting beliefs that I see on YouTube in comments and just what people say in, in the comment section. Um, let's start with this one of, uh, I am too poor, I can't afford it. Um, success is only for those who already have money. I can't afford to start a business. Uh, what, what, what would you say is limiting in this belief system and how would you reframe it? And by the way, guys, we're not telling you what to believe. Believe whatever you want to believe. We're talking about the mindset of success. So if you want to create success in your life, then there are certain beliefs that you can choose to adopt that are going to be more empowering for you. Um, it's, it's irrelevant what the truth is, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, the truth doesn't really matter in this scenario. Uh, I could say that, you know, if, if I, I can say I'm good looking, I'm good looking, I'm good looking, or I could have a belief that I'm ugly, I'm ugly, I'm ugly, regardless of what the truth may be, and, and that's always questionable, who knows really what the truth is, so subjective. Um, what's going to serve me is one of those beliefs versus the other. One of those beliefs, I'm going to feel down, I'm going to have low self-esteem, it's not going to empower me to, to kind of live the life that I want to live, uh, another belief might help me more. So um, it's, it's not, yeah, so what would you say to that limiting belief? Yeah, well, I, at first I say, it's, you brought up a good point, it's important to understand there's objective truths and then there's subjective truths. We all have a subjective experience of reality. There's no absolute truth when it comes to reality because there's billions of people on this planet that all have different belief systems. You know, people have different beliefs with politics, with religion, with almost anything you can possibly think of. I mean, if you look at any comments online from any video, any Facebook post, you're basically seeing different mindsets, different belief systems, different models of the world. So who's right and who's wrong? You can't really say. You know, there's maybe partial truths to everything. But the most important thing, if you want to create success, is what is gonna be the most useful for you? Mm -hmm. Meaning, what's the belief system, what's the mindset that is gonna ultimately lead you to success? And even though it might not be you know, the way it looks in reality to you right now, is the only reason why is because you're filtering things based on your existing model of the world, your existing mindset. Um, you know, As the saying goes, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And also whatever's gonna be true for you is gonna be based on your beliefs and your perception, not based on what's really going on in reality. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand that we can interpret anything, anything in either an empowering way or a disempowering way. So having the belief that you know I'm poor, um, I don't have any money, I can't make any money, even though that 
might potentially be true. You might be able to look in your bank account and you don't have much money. Maybe that's been um, your experience. The challenge with that belief system is as long as you carry that belief and you say that to yourself unconsciously, then you're, you're basically closing off any possibility of you making any more money. Because as you keep saying to yourself, I can't afford this, I can't do that, I don't have enough money, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You continue to stay in that suffering state of poverty versus instead, if you change your mindset and instead you say, I don't have the money, but how can I come up with money? How can I uh, find a way to be resourceful and to come up with some more cash flow? By doing that, now you're opening and expanding your mindset. You're not limiting it. You're not just closed off, but now you're opening up to possibilities. Mm -hmm. By asking a how question, you're opening up your mind to different possibilities to be creative and to find ways to come up with money. So money ultimately is a resource, just like time is a resource, um, education is a resource, but ultimately what will determine your success is a mindset of resourcefulness because resourceful people will find or come up with the resources. Because look, if I put a gun to your head, this, this is a great metaphor that I always like to use when people say I can't do this or whatever it might be. I'll say, if I put a gun to your head or I might put a gun to someone that you care and love most in the world and I said, if you don't find a way within the next 24 hours or the next seven days to come up with $1,000, then there's gonna be a consequence. I can guarantee that you would, you would find a way because there's a big enough consequence that if you don't come up with the money, you or someone that you love is going to die. And so when there's a consequence, when there's a reason for you to be resourceful, you find the way or you make the way. You'll do whatever it takes. You'll do, you have a whatever it takes kind of mindset and that's what you need to be successful. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you have a strong enough why and purpose, it will it will overcome any limiting belief, any rationalization, any excuse, any story that you have that's holding you back. If you have a strong enough why, you find the way, you make the way, you do whatever it takes. And that's what I've seen, especially oftentimes from those that have their back against the wall, people at rock bottom, yeah. it's like they're desperate. Yeah. And that desperation can be powerful because, um, you know, for me, I was desperate in my life. I was struggling in a huge way, I got into debt. I got, I made a lot of bad decisions, um, you know, but that actually was able to use that as motivation and I was able to succeed, I think more than another person that's just comfortable mm -hmm. with their life and everything is easy. For so sure. you can actually, it actually can become an advantage. For sure. You know, and that's another reframe. You can think, oh, poor me and my situation, this is really bad. And it might be the reality that, yeah, it's a really shitty shit situation and I wouldn't wish it upon anyone, but it is your situation. and how can you use it? You know, maybe it's such an uncomfortable situation to be in that it propels you to move forward in your life. It propels you to make decisions, to take risks that you wouldn't otherwise take, to take action. And for someone who's not in that situation, who's living maybe a more comfortable life, they don't have that fire lit under their ass that's going to push them forward. And so you can use it to make massive growth, take massive strides in your life. Um, and oftentimes if you ask any successful person, they'll, they'll, um, they'll look back and they'll kind of um, ruminate on that time when they were first getting started, where they had that energy, they had that grit, they had that drive because they had such a strong um, desire to create success. They had a big reason why. But then when they achieve success, they now live a more comfortable lifestyle. They don't have that strong why anymore. And they don't have that energy that they used to have. They don't have that, mm -hmm. that grit anymore. Yeah. Um, so it's those beginning stages, especially, and, and you can use that situation to, to help you, to motivate you. Yeah, you have more of a purpose. You know, for me, I, I grew up poor with my family. My parents went through a bankruptcy. It was incredibly hard. My parents eventually ended up divorced over lack of finances. That was our, always a, an arguing point in our mm -hmm. family. And so I grew up linking massive pain to not having money. And that motivated me tremendously to make money because I said, you know, I don't want to live that way. I don't want my kids to eventually grow up, not have, you know, have to go through what I went through. Um, I didn't want to have a marriage and end up having that be negatively affected by lack of finances and argue and yell around that. So I had a strong purpose and reason. 
And everyone's going to have their own reason, their own purpose for making money, but you got to find what that is. You got to find and ask yourself, why do I want this? Why am I doing this? What will this give me? What will it cost in my life if I don't do this, if I don't take action, if I don't create success? Because we're all driven by pain and pleasure. We want to avoid pain and we want to move towards pleasure, but often pain is a more powerful motivator in the short term than pleasure. We'll do more to get out of pain than we will to move towards pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so even though you might have a why and a purpose that says, well, I want to make more money so that I can travel. I want to make some more money so I can get another car. Well, yeah, that's pleasure, but it's not going to produce the same drive versus the pain of, you know, I want to be able to survive. I hate my job. I can't stand it. I can't live this way. I don't want to spend the rest of my life or a third of my life as most people do working at a job that I hate. Mm -hmm. You know, reasons like that will drive and propel you mm -hmm. to doing what's necessary to create success. Behind every successful person is a strong why. Mm -hmm. So what's yours? Because if you really want to create success in your life, however you define it, and you know, success can be defined in many ways. Sure. Some people define it financially. Some people define it by having ex the joy, the peace in life. Some people define it, and there's many different ways. But if you want to create success in your life, and however which way you define it, you need to have a strong why. And so come up with that. That's going to be the foundation. That's what's going to propel you forward. That's what's going to give you that passion. People ask, how I don't feel passionate. How can I feel that passion? It's when you have a strong purpose, a strong why, something that you're moving towards, that fills you with energy, with energy. You wake up in the morning with a spring to your step, excited to start your day because you're working towards something that means something to you. So another limiting belief that I hear people saying is, well, I, why me? Like there is, there's no reason for me to create success in my life. I, none of my family went to university. Um, I come from very humble beginnings. I don't have any credentials. I, I, I don't have what it takes to become successful. I don't have the experience. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the connections. Um, there's no way it can happen for me. It's for other people. It's not for me. And as long as you believe that you're right, right? Whatever you believe, it's going to be true for you, whether it's based on reality or, or not. So yes, there might be some truth to that, but at the same time, you know, you can interpret things in a more positive way. One is with that mindset, you're looking at all the deficiencies of yourself in life. And we all have weaknesses. We all have, you know, reasons why, um, you know, to be unhappy or upset with ourselves or our lives or things we can point to in our past or with our background or whatever it is. But here's a belief and here's a mindset you have to adopt. The past does not equal the future. Okay, the past does not equal the future. I don't care, I don't care what your family's background is or where you came from or what your circumstances were or how bad of a student you were in high school or you know, whatever has happened to you in your life because there's no relationship to that and the present and the future. The only reason why people's past or their present and their future continues to look like their past is they keep bringing that with them. They keep projecting that into their present and their future. You have to divorce that and say, that's the past. Right now in this moment is a brand new opportunity. I can, I can do whatever I, I can be a new person today than I was before. I can create my new life. I can take new actions. I can make new decisions. And you know, obviously one way you can destroy beliefs as well with this sort of thinking is ask yourself, are there other people throughout history that also didn't have an education, but they went on to succeed. Well, obviously the answer is yes. If you study success, you study people like a Thomas Edison, who was told when he was in school that he was deficient, learning disability, he'll never make it, all these negative things. And sure enough, someone like Thomas Edison went on to be one of the greatest inventors in mankind, right? If you look at it, Oprah Winfrey, who uh, was somebody that um, was born to a teenage mother, uh, she got you know, pregnant when she was also a teenager as well. She ended up, I think, in uh, you know, juvenile, like a, she was like a delinquent and got into trouble. And she had all these limitations, all of these challenges from her past. But if she were to continue to hold on to that, she would not have become Oprah Winfrey, the first female black billionaire. And so everyone, everything is impossible until someone does it. Right, And so that's a mindset, is just believing everything is possible. Mm -hmm. If there's someone else that's done it throughout history, 
and they've been able, able to succeed if they were struggling, if they were broke or whatever it is, if they were able to do it, then you can mm -hmm. too. You know, you have the same nervous system, you have the same neurology as that person does. So there's no reason why you can't also do that. And you have to really take on more of a pes uh, an optimist mindset than a pessimist. A pessimist is someone who will see things as they are, but often see things worse than they are. Mm -hmm. An optimist is someone that will see things as they are, but make it better than it is. They'll see it better than it is, and they'll be more likely to make it the way they now see it. So you have a choice with everything in your life, every circumstance. You want to see it as it is, but not make it worse than it is. If you make it worse than it is, you're going to over-dramatize. You're going to be a drama king, a drama queen. You're going to ruminate on all the reasons why something's not going to work out. Instead, you want to be an optimist. You want to see it as it is, but you also want to see it better than it is. You know, And then that vision that you have will propel and motivate you and you have to stay focused on that. It's really just a matter of how you interpret things. One example I can give you just demonstrates the power of mindset. Two people, they go to Iraq, you know, in the army and they both step in the landmine, they lose their legs, they're now in a wheelchair. One person comes back to the United States and they're depressed. They're depressed, they're suicidal, they say, God, why me? My whole life is over. I'll never be able to be in a relationship. I'll never be able to do this. They're focusing as a pessimist on all the negative aspects of what's occurred in their life. The other person, same circumstance, also in a wheelchair, lost their legs. They come back. They have a different mindset. They say, God, thank you. You gave me another chance. You gave me another opportunity. I've now going to value and appreciate my life more than I ever have before. You know, I'm now going to live my life fully. I'm going to do the things without any regret in my life because I've realized how easily life can be taken from me. I'm going to value my friendships, my relationships even more. I'm going to love more. I'm going to give more. I'm going to, you know, get closer to God. And they have a different mindset, a different appreciation, a different, you know, even going on to succeed and do things that, you know, maybe they thought they could never do. So same event that's occurred, but radically different mindset. That's a choice that you can make. We all have the power to choose what we're gonna believe and what we're gonna take on. And so you have to make sure that as you're building a business or creating success, you will have adversity, you might fail, you might make mistakes, you're gonna have many things that you expect not work out the way you expect, but you have to be able to keep that optimistic uh, attitude and mindset to look for the good, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? How can I utilize this? How can this make me better? What can I do better next time? You have to make sure you direct your focus on that because that's what's going to allow you to move forward and to fail forward versus if you focus on as a pessimist, the first time you fail, the first time you have adversity, you're just going to get frustrated, discouraged, and you're going to give up, mm -hmm. right? And that's why people don't succeed is because of their mindset. Mm -hmm. So powerful. Yeah, one of those people was focused on what they lost, yeah. and one of them was focused on what they gained and the potential future. And so that's the thing is that the mind, the mind, the mind's not concerned about your happiness and fulfillment. This mind is concerned about survival. That's what it was built for. It was built to keep you alive. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves that because you can't always trust the mind when it comes to what's in your best interest. When it comes to your safety, your mind's got you. You know, If there's anything that's threatening, you'll be on high alert. But it's up to you, it's up to you um, to, to make sure that you are looking for what, what is going to empower me, what is going to be best for me, what's going to serve me, because sometimes my mind will ruminate too much in the past, it will be stuck there, it will keep me in chains and shackles, and it will prevent me from ever moving forward with my life. And so, um, you know, one thing that you did mention, though, is, is having these references and having role models of other people. I think that's so important because, you know, you might think that, well, how am I supposed to do it? Um, you know, little old me or, you know, it, how, you know, how can I create success? But then you just, you go look and you find there's so many examples of people before you who've come from worse off situations than you um, and they've created success and you learn from them and use them as references. And one thing they have that uh, enabled them to create success is, is human potential. 
And that's one thing that you have too. And it's the same reason that you have the same ability to create success as them, is we all have this human potential, this God-given human potential that we really don't know what are the limits of human potential. You know, something is, um, it's, uh, you know, something is impossible until the human is able to achieve it. The four minute mile, Roger Bannister, he, um, he was the first to run the four minute mile. And before that, everyone thought it was impossible because nobody ever did it. He made it possible because he kept on envisioning himself. He, he used visualization. He saw himself doing it and then he did it. And then shortly after he achieved this world record, many people were able to run the four minute mile. And what does that tell us? That tells us that now that someone achieved it, other people know it's possible. Yeah. And because they know it's possible, the mind knows it's possible, the, the physical limitations didn't change, the mind changed. The mind now opened up and it now saw that, hey, I can do this too. And so it achieved that. And so you have human potential. It's incredible what you are capable of, but you have to Har it's harvested within you, but you have to call upon it. You have to summon it in order for it to come out. And so it's up to you to do that. Or it's just going to sit here forever and you never will tap into it. But there's going to be a part of you that knows that you are capable of a lot more. And that part of you uh, that wants to achieve success has the ability to summon that human potential. Yeah. And, you know, we all have limiting beliefs, but we have to examine them. We don't just have to accept them as fact. And I remember for me when I was a kid, I get you know picked on when I was in school, and you know kids would say you're ugly or you're stupid, and I would just accept those as fact. You know those are beliefs that I eventually adopted until I started to challenge those beliefs and say, is that really true? You know, uh, is this really serving me in my life? And we all have conditioning that we've adopted from society, from our parents, from our teachers, from our friends, from media, from marketing, all these things that um, basically influenced our belief systems that you have to be willing and open to examine and change if necessary. It's almost like we have a, a software, we have an operating system and it's outdated. Like you've got to upgrade it. You know, you got to update your computer, you got to update your phone, you update it with new up-to-date software. It's the same thing with our beliefs and our mindset because your brain is like a computer. and there's a lot of beliefs that we're carrying with us that we formulated at a young age from whatever circumstance, maybe an event happened in your life, you failed and you created a belief or a meaning around that. Now that's a belief that's limiting you and you're taking that with you. Um, one great story and example is with elephants. They'll take baby elephants, they'll put a stake in the ground, they'll tie a piece of rope to the stake and the baby elephant's leg the baby elephant will, will make attempts to get away. It'll make attempts to move around, but pretty soon at a young age, it starts to realize the limitations and the boundaries. And so what happens is the elephant stops trying. It stops trying to pull against the stake and the rope. And as the elephant grows up, it's a full grown elephant. It could easily rip that stake out of the ground and go anywhere it wants to go, but it doesn't even try. Why? Because that elephant has formed that belief and has been conditioned and trained that it's not possible. And we all have a giant within us. We're all capable of so much more than we think. And just because you failed or something didn't work out, don't let that define you. You know, don't let that stop you from trying again or pursuing whatever it is that you want to pursue in your life. Because again, the past does not equal the future, not unless you live there. Right? So you got to remember that. You got to remember that this is a new moment and that you are better today than you've ever been in before in your life. You're more skilled, you're more knowledgeable, you have more wisdom. And so you have to always be willing to keep trying, keep going and uh, expanding yourself and your mindset if you want to be successful. Mm -hmm. So the message of this video is if you want to adopt the mindset of success, then you need to bring hyper awareness to your thoughts and to your beliefs and you need to challenge them. Some of them you might decide, hey, this is a great belief. I'm going to keep it. And others you might say, you know what, this is no longer serving me in my life. I'm going to, I'm going to chuck it and I'm going to, I'm going to adopt a new belief that's going to really empower me and serve me this year. And so it, it requires a level of awareness. It's not easy. It requires effort. 
You know, it's, it's, it's bringing on a day-to-day basis. When you're in the kitchen and you have a thought, it's bringing awareness to that thought. It's, it's watching that thought, watching those beliefs. How often do you bring up this, this belief, this limiting belief? Is it, you know, and, 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 and so bringing awareness to it and making changes, and then you will see that when you change the way that you think and your perspective, then everything changes. Then the world that you see changes. Nothing externally has changed, but you've changed. When you've changed, the world seems to change, and it will only help you on your road of uh, on your road to success. Because remember, it's eighty percent mindset. Some of the most successful people I know, it's because they have the mindset of success. If you look at some of the interviews I've done for people who successfully have been selling on Amazon, oftentimes. We're talking about the mindset on that interview. They have a mindset and they want to share that with people because they know that it wasn't the tools and the softwares and the mechanics. It was the mindset that helped them to push forward and create that success in their lives. So Stefan, I know that you have so much more that you can share on this topic, but if you guys want to learn more from Stefan and hear him speaking more about mindset, he has so many incredible videos on his YouTube channel. It's called Project Life Mastery. I'll link it down in the description box below. Um, otherwise, anything else you would like to share? No, just, you know, we're here in 2022. It's an amazing uh, opportunity, a fresh slate to achieve your goals. So make sure you set goals for yourself this year and make this the best year yet. I have no doubt that you will. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, Have a fabulous year and we'll see you next time.